Hey guys, my name's Trev, and the channel's name is Trev's Life. And today, we are gonna be making homemade ginger beer, and it's gonna be delicious. Alrighty, so let's hook in. Um, you can buy artificial ginger kits at the home brew store, but today I've decided I'm gonna make homemade uh, ginger beer with proper ginger. Okay, so what I've done is I've got one kilo of ginger, which I've washed. I'm not gonna worry about taking the skin off. And so what we'll do is we'll roughly chop it up and blitz it up. Oh, and to my left, I've got three liters of hot water, of water that's boiling. So that'll just save a bit of time. Okay, here we go. So we just rough chop half of the ginger. Smells so good. Little pro tip, if you've got somewhere to grow this stuff, grow it at home, because I just paid 30 bucks a kilo. <laughs> okay, half a kilo of ginger, straight in the blender. Now, the big thing with home brew is sanitize everything, use a bit of um, bleach with no smelly stuff in it, just your basic bleach, and then rinse it off four or five times after you've rinsed the, the bleach off with nice hot water. Okay, so the trick is keep everything nice and clean. Okay, so half a kilo of ginger, chuck in some water. Now, the whole thing is you don't have to be perfect with the amounts of water that you're using with the boiling process, with the blitzing process, because once it's all done and it's in the fermenter, then we have to fill it up with tap water to bring it up to 23 liters anyway. Alrighty. So, let's blitz some ginger. Okay, that's mixed up. smell of ginger. Okay, so into your pot of boiling water, you put the first of your ginger, Just chuck it in, and now we chop up and blitz the second half kilo. Okay, that's the second lot. Oh, so yummy. Radio. So that's it for the blender. What we can do is maybe just rinse a little bit of this residue, residual ginger, because this beautiful stuff can't be wasted. Here we go. Right here, next part is to add two kilos of sugar. Now we're going to be putting in six kilos in total. But I'm just going to put two kilos in with the hot water here. Get your spoon, which has been sanitized. Give it a nice stir. Okay guys, I'll give you a close up of the ginger. Now, here she is, beautiful ginger brew. Now what we've got to do is at this stage, if you have four fresh lemons, you can squeeze four fresh lemons and put it in as well. I don't have fresh lemons at the moment, so I'm just gonna use a bit of this stuff. So I'm going with 300 mils of lemon juice, just to give it a little bit of a zesty taste. Okay. Wow, this is 
just gonna be so good. All right, now, what you do is you let that sit with the lid on it until it comes to the boil, and then you let it, you turn it right down and you let it simmer for 40 minutes. So I'll come back to you when the simmering process is finished. Okay guys, it's been about 40 minutes and I'll give you a bit of a close up of what the brew looks like. Ooh look at that. Oh, it smells beautiful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, <laughs> all right, we got that camera back in position. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'll switch him off like that. Now what we've got to do is we've got to let it cool down to room temperature. Um, so obviously it's too hard when it's hot and you don't want to damage your, fer your fermenter. So I'll get back to you with the magic of TV and before you know it, it'll be cool. Alright. Alright guys, now time for the fun part. Um, this is now cool to touch. I actually chucked a bit of ice in just to speed up the process a little bit. So what we do, I'll just I've got my new fermenter. I've rinsed it out with hot water. Um, everything needs to be rinsed with boiling hot water before you use it. And then, what I'm going to do is pop in a little bit of water in the bottom. Doesn't matter how much because we've got to fill him right up to this line anyway. Right, so let's start sieving this brew. Make sure you've got nice clean hands, so you can just splash it around a bit. Now if you wanted to, you don't have to ferment this. You can now put this in the fridge and just drink it how it is. Or alternatively, you can buy mineral water or soda water and use this as a cordial and just add it to your mineral water or your soda water which is a pretty cool idea if you want a refreshing drink without a kick. Put that there. Try not to spill this. And then she goes. Okay, I just got some water. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just wash wash a little bit more water through this ginger just to get a little bit more taste out of it. Now you can use a cheesecloth, squeeze it out. I don't have a cheesecloth, so I was going to use a chucks or a tea towel, and I thought, no, nah, there could be a you get a little bit of cross contamination out of that, so. I figured I'll just wash a bit of water through just to get the best of it. Alrighty. Alrighty, so at this stage, we've got the boiled up ginger. It's been filtered. There's gonna be a little few bits in there that are gonna settle down. It doesn't matter. When you, when you um, do your bottling, the tap is above the sediment line. So you're not gonna draw any sediment into your bottles. So now the, the next part is we put in the other four kilos to make a total of six kilos of sugar. We get our spoon and we 
and give it a good stir. Okay, now that we've given it a good stir, um, I'm going to take it inside and I'm going to fill it up to the 23, 20, 1, 2, 3, yep, the 23 litre mark. So I'll fill that up now and then we'll take, we'll go to the next step. Okay guys, I've filled it up now with tap water up to the 23 litre mark. Now I'll give you a quick look at what it looks like inside. Here we are. Thank you, camera lady. Okay, so the next thing is to add the yeast. Brewing yeast. Some people use baker's yeast because it's cheap. Um, anyway, I've got brewer's yeast. Five grams. I'm going to use the full five grams because we're doing a 30 bottle mix, the same as a home brew. So, open the yeast. and sprinkle it on top. Ah, they tricked me. There's another packet inside. Okay, sprinkle the yeast on top. You don't have to stir it in. Some people do, some people don't. It makes no difference. The whole thing is if you stir it, you then get yeast on the side of your uh, fermenter. All right, so last thing, screw your lid on, get it nice and tight, well not too tight, and then you get your bubbler. What I like to do is just wet the end of the bubbler a little bit to slide it in to the seal. Like so, chuck in a bit of water. And that's it. Alrighty, so what we've got to do now is we've got to wait seven days for this to ferment, and then I'll do the second video in this three part series when we bottle, and then two weeks after we bottle, we'll do a taste testing. Alright guys, until we see you on the next video, see you later.